This is your election headquarters and welcome to Election Digest live on your Joy News channel, Joy Prime TV and of course on Joy 99.7 FM. My name is Daniel Dazi for the benefits of our radio audience. It's 20 minutes to 11 a.m. We are um, just a bit over uh, 12 hours since polls closed and I can tell you the results are coming in thick and fast as uh, the TV audience can see on the screen. But for the benefit of the radio audience, we have the results from 93 constituencies so far. Getting interesting, John Dramani Mahama, NDC's presidential candidate, has 1,687,982. Once again, John Dramani Mahama has 1,687,982. Forty-nine point five seven percent. Nana Adudankwa Ekufuado, President of the Republic, has one million six hundred and sixty-one thousand six hundred and ninety-seven, representing sixty-eight point eight percent. Of course, all other candidates together have fifty-five thousand two hundred and ninety-seven um, coming together to make. 1.62%. What we'll be doing in the next couple of hours is that we'll be breaking down for you exactly how this happened, telling, taking you from constituency to constituency, trying to digest the results and also, of course, hearing from the key players involved, the parliamentary candidates and the new MPs elect. We'll begin by going to the Kole Klote constituency, my, where my colleague Charles Aite is standing by because Dr. Zaneta Rawlings has been declared winner at that constituency. Charles, um, good morning and tell us, what is the situation there at Kole Klote? All right, so Daniel, you can see from your screen, it's a very jubilant mood at the coalition center of the Kole Klote constituency. This is very much strategic for us to have this visual because you've seen a bereaved Janet Rawlings in a jubilant mood. This is in deterring her from her victory. Of course, this is provisional results we're getting from the coalition center. She was able to pull 39,343 votes as against her contender, Prince Deborah, who pulled 31,154 votes. Now, this is massive because if you look at the vote difference in 2016, it was just in excess of 4,000. But now we're looking at over 8,000 votes in difference against Prince Deborah. Also, just a little bit of a description of what we're seeing here as we take the cameras off Senator Rawlings. It's a jubilant crowd of supporters who've all come here to just feed into the whole mood, the celebratory mood here at the Coliclotic Coalition Center. Now, Daniel, of course, Senator Rawlings has to speak to us at the moment. She's saying that she's waiting for the entire results to be announced, of which we do understand, considering the tension around the area. But it's very crucial for us to understand that this particular constituency is much more of a swing state. We do know from history, Daniel, that each and every parliamentary candidate of the NDC gets retained since 1996, just regarding the issues of exemptions in 2000 in that particular way. But this is the entire mood. Of course, it has been a very heated campaign for Senator Rawlings here at the political constituency. We start speaking to her shortly, but she tells us that she's waiting to sign onto the pink sheet, and she's waiting for the results to be officially declared by the polling agent before she can have any other form of interviews. But there she is, jubilant as she is. Yesterday, we got in touch with her about her plans for the constituency, and she's talking about development, development, development. So we shall be hearing more from her today, especially when the, the results are officially declared. When we have our provisional results, we are expecting the official declaration any moment from now, Daniel. Charles, thank you very much uh, for that update now. Uh, Charles Aitu, of course, reporting live from the Kole Klote constituency. We'll come back to you, Charles, when Dr. Zanetta Rawlings grants us that interview. And of course, very shortly, I'll be taking you to our smart wall where we can understand exactly the impact 
of this win. As you can see there, the NDC and the MPP have shared uh, the Kolekloti constituency over the past, uh, oh, since 1996. It's only in 2016 that Dr. Zanetto Rawlings managed to clinch that seat in a parliamentary race and the MPP won in the presidential race. We'll be curious to know who won there in the presidential race as well because as we can see, that was a skirt and blouse constituency in the last election. Let's head over quickly to the Adentan Coalition Center because there are agitations there after a woman who says she's a presiding officer brought in pink sheets and other electoral materials a few minutes ago. She says she took them home and has now brought them to be added to the rest. The NBC supporters are angry and Joseph Opokugapo is observing there for us. Joseph, uh, tell us exactly how this happened. I think we can turn out okay. the right now. Right, Joseph, if you can hear me, let us understand exactly how this happened, that this woman came. Uh, was she dressed in EC apparel? Um, tell us, describe that incident for us. You can hear me. Uh, this is something that unfolded um, just about uh, 10, 15 minutes ago. Uh, this is a woman who came in, not in an EC apparel, but she was just um, in a regular tie, uh, holding... Um, the Ghana must go back, one of the Ghana must go back. She came in with that, with some electoral materials in there, including the thing sheets. There were a number of NDC supporters who have actually gathered outside of the premises as we speak, just to show you a quick view of that. A number of them have since dispersed, but uh, a number of them had actually gathered here. And when the information got to them that this said woman had come in with these materials, they were not happy. Uh, they approached the entrance of the center and were shouting and insisting that the woman should be arrested. They were making the point that it's an attempt to rig the polls, and they think that someone is trying to steal the victory that they say uh, 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 the NDC has won here away from them. But eventually, cool heads did prevail. Uh, the two sides discussed what exactly the way for it should be. The electoral of, uh, officials and the security officials got involved. Let me just quickly get um, a comment from uh, Chris. Uh, Chris Cotillard, he's actually the director of communications of the NDC right here in this Adentan constituency. Chris, thanks very much for joining us. Just to get a sense, let, let, let's begin with the background. When the woman came in earlier this morning, what was the explanation she came with as to how come she's not bringing in the ballot? I think, uh, I think she just arrived with, a, as you have rightly said, with the Ghana must go back with a letter materials. And it's probably uh, the result from some uh, polling station and she is a presiding officer and I believe that she has been given some kind of training and we were all sure how come she took the materials home and then brought them at 10 o'clock because we slept here so even if she was tired at least she would have come around 7 or 6 o'clock she just brought it we know we have won both parliamentary and presidential but we're just waiting for the EC to confirm we are also here you know, trying to collect our results ourselves and then waiting for uh, other agents who have not brought, you know, their, their, their pink shirt. And, so, and apart from here, there are a number of others who have not brought it. No, know, no, no, no. The EC officials, I don't, I don't know. But when the incident happened, Jude just confirmed that they're expecting at least three of them. So the people were wondering that where would you, as a trained EC official, where would you send a the materials home, it can be tempered with. And you know, elections, rigging is possible in any election. And when you're not, you are not vigilant, a lot of things happen. People win the election and go to bed the next day, the results have changed. So our people are here, they know that we have won. They are here to secure the victory. Adenta is great, but we have to wait gently and make sure that the EC declare our parliamentary candidate, you know, a victor before we... we so, so, so just to get a sense, so you've confirmed that these materials yeah, yes. she brought so, in are so genuine people, and should be added onto the previous results that have come in that Yes, time. so when she brought the material and our people were agitating that they were not going to allow her to enter the, you know, the hall. So uh, my colleague really, you know, compared what they have at least. You know, she's a human being, you know. So she, he checked and then it, 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 it tallied with what we have. So my colleague confirmed it. That's why we allow it to go. The people are saying that we shouldn't even allow it because it's a foreign material, but we have we have we have cross check and it tallies with what we have there, so we allow it to go. And Jude was saying that he was expecting two, three of you know of the electoral materials from different 
people. So she's seeing. So I, I think we are still expecting two of them. But it's not acceptable. I think going forward, they see make sure that things like that, you know, do not happen in the future. And, and just to get a sense, so you've been able to calm your supporters. They understand that this is a genuine mistake by the presiding officer. You know, they are charged. They they didn't even want her to accept it because she went home with it. So I I didn't explain it to them, even though I addressed the media, but I didn't explain to them. You know, I just charged them and told them that everything is under control. We are here and they should be around. Let's secure the video once and for all. I, I didn't explain to them, but I only calm them down that we are here for, you know, to also secure the victory. So there's, there's nothing to worry about. Many thanks for speaking to us. Chris Courtier is the NDC's communications director in the Adventan constituency. So uh, those are the developments. We are still waiting for the eventual declaration and the certification of the results from the Adentan constituency. Thank you very Thank much, you. Joseph Opokugako, for that update. Of course, um, just a bit of background. We do know that in the Adentan constituency, provisional results are showing that sitting MP and communications director for the NPP has lost that seat there. And, of course, we'll bring you more analysis on that in a few moments. But I want us to go here next. The Ningo Pram Pram constituency, as you can see, John Dramani Mahama has picked up that constituency. Not much of a surprise there. He has 49,376 votes. President Ekufuado with 18,472 votes. Percentages there are 69.5 from John Mahama to 26.0 from President Ekufuado. However, let's bring you the story on the ground. And Kwetenate is the man who covered that constituency for us. He joins us now. Now, uh, Kwete, where are you now in the constituency and what's the situation there? Unfortunately, we seem to have lost Kwete Nate. We will get to um, him in just a moment. But since we are here, I want to take you very quickly to what happened in the Adentan constituency in the past, in the last election, because that is what would really help us understand exactly what's going on here. Um, so we'll move quickly here, where this little blue spot here, Yabwa Binga Samwa actually bested Mohammed Ramadan about just about 1,000 votes, 33,952 to 32,588. But here's where it gets interesting. I want you to take a look at the trends here. If you notice, Adentan often swings for the winner. If you take out 2004, which is the only outlier year, where um, the NDC won presidential and the NPP won parliamentary, 2008 2012, they swung to the NDC. Even there, I understand the candidates were changing, and Yabwabi and Samoa picked it up for the NPP in 2016. That was the last election. Let us quickly go back to Kwete Nate in the Ningo Pram Pram constituency. He has some updates for us. Uh, Kwete, what can you report? Daniel, so these are the certified results from the Ningo Pram Pram constituency. Right, the Ningo Pram Pram constituency. Kwete, I want you to um, take your time and give me those figures so I can update um, our viewers very, very um, quickly. So what are these results that you have? For the presidential, mm -hmm. NDC had 49,376. 49,376. This is for the NDC. John Mahama. Thank you very much. Um, and we'll do NPP over here. All right. The so what MPP, did the NPP get? The NPP had 18,472. 18,472. And this is pres presidential, right? This presidential. What about parliamentary? Um, let me run you through the other details. Goom had 847. 847. 847, yes. Mm -hmm. JFP had 22. CPP right. had 71. JCPP had 12. APC had 66. LPG had 14. PNC had 18. DPP had 25. 
PNC had 18. Mm. NDP had 21. And then the independent presidential candidate had 24. The rejected ballot for the presidential was 2,081. Quite, give me that number again because it's a very interesting number. The rejected ballots were 20... No, 2,081. Yeah, so that's 2,081. Yes. And Goom got 847. Pardon me, the yes. writing tool seems to... 847. Exactly. Right. The turnout for the presidential was 68,968. Quete, you know what? I want to come back to you and really get this in detail and do some analysis, but let's go back quickly to the Kole Klote constituency where Charles Aite has joined us on Zoom. He is currently um, with Dr. Zanetto Rawlings. Charles, take it away. Hello, Daniel. So as you can see, she's currently making her way to the vehicle. We shall be speaking to her shortly. She has agreed to grant us an interview. But you could imagine the scenes behind us. You could imagine the jubilant crowd in that particular way. This is unprecedented. 8,000 votes in difference. It comes at a time of sadness in this space. I think she joins us now. So how has this been a moment for you? Massive victory, 8,000 votes. How do you feel into this business? Sorry? How do you feel into this What's it's, it's a mixture of feelings. You know, I wish my dad could have been here. I wish my organizer could have been here. But such a life. But a lot of work has gone into this. And I'm just so thankful to God and everybody who's worked so hard. What's the priority? The priority? The priority? In terms of? In terms of? In the constituency, what's going to be your priority next? The, the issues that were there are still there. And they have to do with education youth skills training and development, as well as the other issues that, you know, are quite scary with health and, and other things. But um, for today, we just want to give thanks. Thank you very much. Daniel, so sorry. I think you barely hear because of the sound. But what exactly she's been saying is that her main priority next year is going to be that of development and skills training. This will be her two major priorities next right. year, Daniel. And of course, her, 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 her main priority comes in the wake of the message that her main contender raised against her during the 20 during this year's election. We're talking of issues regarding we're talking of issues regarding low uh, matters of development among the human resource in this constituency, matters regarding choke gutters and slums, issues regarding thefts, unemployment and everything that comes to it. We do know that Zanetta Rawlings in her own light has done everything possible to maintain her stead in this constituency. And based on the interactions that she's had with us, her main focus next year will be two major things, development and human resource. Daniel. Charles, I say thank you very much. So you just had that confirmation that Dr. Zanetta Rawlings has picked up the Clotet Colley constituency and interesting for you to know is that she's managed to widen that difference between her and the NPP candidates. This time around, it was Prince Deborah. From 4,000 votes difference to 8,000 votes difference, that's nearly double the performance from four years ago. Impressive indeed if you're looking at it, but we'll crunch more of the numbers to see exactly what it means later. In the meantime, we'll quickly finish off with Kwete, who was earlier giving us that those results from Ningo Pram Pram constituency. Do I still have Kwete on the line? Right, Kwete. So let's quickly um, put a bun in it and give us the, uh, an end to that. Um, pardon me, I had to quickly go to Clote College to get an understanding of what happened four years back. But let me take you to Ningo Pram Pram quickly. And um, Kwete, tell us what the results are again. Okay, so for the parliamentary, NDC Sam George had 48,601. 48,601. This is, this is um, a sharp difference um, uh, to the results he had, you know, four years ago, which he had a little over 23,000. 
the MPP Alexander Mati had 19,911. Gums Fribonte had 869. The independent candidate, Richard Nati, had 270. The rejected ballot for the parliamentary was 1,204. Mm. Turnout was 69,711. Right. Quite Thank you so much. So I just want to get a quick confirmation from you that the third highest political party was Goom with north of 800 votes. This was the same in the presidential ballot as well. Exactly. And the rejected ballots, again, were more than 1,000, but in the case of the presidential, it was more than 2,000. Exactly. Kwiti, thank you very much. And um, it's very interesting, the figures that we have. If you compare Sam George's current performance to his 2016 performance, which is right here, you realize he more than doubles it. He adds some, 20, um, some 25,000 votes um, to what he had from 2016 here. If you look at Alexander Mate, he bettered Sylvester Tete, who was the candidate in 2016. He appreciated his vote tally by some 6,000 votes, but unfortunately, that jump by Sam George really puts him in a comfortable lead, um, if I can use that expression. Of course, we always knew that Ningo Prampra would be a tough call for the NPP, but it's in places like this that you want to take away as much as possible from your opponent so that you can cushion your presidential candidates, for instance. Let's quickly move to another constituency which, on the other hand, is known to be very safe for the NPP. It is the um, Ablekuma... Uh, pardon me, this is the Ablekuma West constituency, known to be the seat of the communications minister, Esto Uso Ekufo. Kweku Asante joins us from there. Kweku, what can you report? Right, Kweku, are you with me? Right. Um, so, unfortunately, we just lost Kweku Asante. Pardon us. We will go to him when we have him. Um, or are we getting Kweku Asante? The commission is here to announce the results. We are at the Dantuman Coalition Center, which is at the Mount Olivet Methodist Church. Madam Aslohusu, the incumbent member of parliament, is already seated here with other members of his party executives, as well as um, her husband. They are waiting for the electoral commission to officially announce what is already known. We're speaking with the NDC here in the constituency, the, 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 the secretary, Andy Note, actually considered defeat, although the electoral commission is here to declare the official results for this constituency. We are waiting for that. It will be coming right. in a very short time. The presidential result, however, is ready, but the, the, the presiding officer, the returning officer for the constituency, has decided that he is going to wait until the parliamentary election result is also ready before he would announce that. And so we are waiting for that, but it's expected that Madame Esloussi will win a third term to represent the public from West constituency. But uh, one twist is it's closer than most people would have thought. The MPP won this constituency by a much more comfortable margin in 2016. This time around, Reverend Kwekwado has been making some important inroads. I was at an exhibition polling station. Well, four years ago, the MPP won by such a huge margin. But at the exhibition polling stations, you could see that the NDC's candidate was winning. Although it was not winning, but was closing the gap. In some instances, the, 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 the votes, the gap between he and then incumbent MP, Madame Eslohusu, was only 20 votes and 35 votes and all. And so we are expecting that the Electoral Commission will announce the results of both the parliamentary and presidential election in this constituency shortly. But yesterday there was a bit of a skirmish here at the Collegiate Centre. The Collegiate Centre was packed by supporters of both the NDP and NDC, as well as other officials of the Electoral Commission who had come from the various polling stations. As of this morning, the security reinforcement here has ensured that all people who are not supposed to be in the collection center has left. So if I just turn my camera shortly, there in your shot is Madame Esla and her husband, 
as well as other party executives waiting officially for the election commission to announce the result of this constituency where it's expected that she will win. His candidate has already uh, conceded defeat. Kweku, um, I just want confirmation on what you said earlier, that the NDC's candidate has already conceded defeat, even though the Electoral Commission has not announced the results. And I've actually, uh, I, I, we, spoke, we spoke with this NDC secretary who said that they thought that they had made a lot of inroads, although they think they could have done better, but they've lost. That's actually what he said, even though officially the results have not been declared. But the NDC in the constituency, if the secretary but what he told us, joining and other media organizations that are here at the coalition center, is anything to go by. They've actually considered defeat. Back on the right. back, just behind me is where the coalition is ongoing. The NBC uh, uh, agents around, most of them have already left, haven't seen what the presidential results have shown. They also haven't seen over 90% of the results in the, in the parliamentary election. They are saying that they think that it's not going to go in their favor, but they are very, very enthusiastic about the kind of inroads they've been able to make in the constituency. As I've said to you, Abdekumar was that the magic wall will tell you that it's, it's, it's been an extremely comfortable place for the NDP since its creation mm. in 2012. Mm. And so the inroads that the NDP has made, they think it's progress and they think it's something that they can use four years to come to be able to make another case. Prabhu, thank you very much. Um, we'll be waiting to get those numbers from you so that we can pop properly uh, illustrate those points you just made to our viewers and listeners, and they will we'll all be able to understand really how far um, a, a mark they have made in this election. Of course, um, quickly, just as Kweku um, suggested, if I take you to the trend data, since 2012, when this constituency was created, the MPP has enjoyed a comfortable margin here, polling 58.2% and 58.2% presidential and parliamentary, respectively, in 2012. In 2016, they took it up in the presidential tally to 61.9% and dropped slightly in the parliamentary tally to 57.0%. But of course, that was still quite an impressive lead there. Uh, let's shift our attention from um, uh, from um, Esla Osu Ekufo's Ablekuma West constituency and go to another key region where we are sure to get some interesting results from and you want to be very, very concerned about if you want to know how this election will finally pan out. That will be the Western region. But before we even go to the Western region, we'll quickly take you to the Laura constituency in the Upper West region, where Beach Zidin had snatched that seat from Anthony Cabo. He's been reacting to his victory. Watch this. Oh, that is just stop it. Oh. The EC returning officer and other EC officials here present. My campaign manager and members of the campaign team present here. My party chairman. The members of the Constituency Executive Committee present here. My own party members and foot soldiers. My dear wife present here. My dear, my dear daughter present here. Ladies and gentlemen, let me extend a very good morning to all of you for having stayed here throughout yesterday and then this morning. I thank you all for the support that you have given me so far. But let me start by thanking the Almighty God for all the good things that he has done for me, my family, and my party, NDC. It is the Almighty God that has used us to rescue the people of Laura constituency and the people of Ghana from the clutches 
of the misrule of the FDP, and particularly the incompetent administration, or for, or for that matter, the incompetent performance of the MPP, MP for this constituency, Honorable Anthony Abai Farkab. And it is as a result of his poor performance that God has spoken through the, the constituents of the Laura constituency. Even before I make any statement, I want to dedicate this victory to the folly. First, I want to dedicate this, 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 this victory to my wife and my family for their support for me throughout all these difficult years and all these difficult periods. Without their support, I'm not sure that I would have had the courage to continue with this fight until victory has smiled on us. I also like to dedicate this victory to my campaign team, led by the campaign chairman, Honorable Samson. Campaign manager, brother. Campaign manager, Honorable Samson Abu. The tactical one. <laughs> the tactical Further, one. Furthermore, I still want to dedicate this victory to the constituency executives who have managed me since I won the parliamentary election up to the point when we had to start the campaign and we put together a campaign team. Finally, I want to dedicate this victory to the teaming supporters of the NDC in the constituency, but for their resilience and their, but for their temerity, I'm not sure that we would have been able to travel this far because the intimidation and the insults that were reigned by the NPP on the NDC party in this constituency and on my person was said that if you didn't have a determined people, it was not possible for you to overcome them. So sure. this victory is also determined for sure. It's also sure. dedicated to them. Ladies and gentlemen, and my brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you all know that this constituency is a constituency for the NDC. And I represent the NDC. So for me, this battle was a battle between a father and a son. The father represented represented by the NDC and the son represented by the NPP. And yet, somehow, they had an illogical thinking and they thought the son was capable of <laughs> defeating the father. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, the MPP, the MPP had an agenda. The MPP had an agenda to decimate the NDC in this constituency. That was the agenda. And so how to execute this agenda was for them to bring massive resources, massive resources. And this constituency has experienced unprecedented levels of injection of resources and financial, both financial and then material. And yet, the people in this constituency have said that enough is enough. Enough is enough of Hon Honorable Anthony Abai Farkabu. And so, whatever he brings and whatever he thinks that he's going to inject into this uh, constituency, he should simply get away with his money and his resources. Thank you. The NDC as a political party has been rescued, has been redeemed. And I want to say that. A victorious bid sitting there, NP elect for the Laura constituency. However, if you take a look at our smart wall here, and I'm currently showing the 2016 results, um, you would realize that this is not too much of a surprise because 
In 2016, when Anthony Abaifa Kabo um, won with 8,704 votes, the NDC candidates then bid sitting incumbent member of parliament had 7,476 votes. And there was an independent candidate here, Abu Samson. I just want you to take note of Abu Samson's um, votes here. He had 5,651. Now, if you add this 5,651 to the 7,476, you get north of 13 or 12,000. That means they would have been higher than Anthony Abayi Fakabu's 8,704. There. So what happened this time round was that the NDC was able to close their ranks and they did not have any splitting of votes in there. And so Anthony Cabo could not slip through. Now, I want to move you to another very interesting constituency this time that we've been talking about quite a bit today. Uh, let me quickly allow our smart world to take you uh, to what used to be the northern region and is now really the northeast region, Nalerigu Gambaga constituency. Take a look at this name here, Hajia Alima Mahama. Now, Hajia Alima Mahama is now the minister for local government, and we understand um, there is some interesting change happening in that constituency. Ilyasu Tanko has joined us from the coalition center. Ilyasu, what are we learning from Nalerigu Gambaga? Well, Daniel, I have here with me the satisfied presidential results for the Nalerigu Gambaga constituency. And I'm just going to run uh, you by age. Uh, we have here the MPP having 28,000. 123. Uh, we have NDC having 31,524. And we have GUM having 245. CPP uh, having 72. Uh, GFP having 178. Uh, GCPP having 60. APC 80. LPG 151, PNC 191, PPP 75, NDP 165, right. an independent candidate uh, gaining 68. Right. Uh, now, this is the result for the presidential result mm. uh, in the Nalirgo Gambada constituency. We have total vote cast uh, uh, 61,929, and we have about 3,044 rejected ballots. So, right. Daniel, that is the results here uh, in the Nalirgu Gambaga constituency, and that is for the presidential. They have just started with uh, the parliamentary, where uh, we understand uh, we, 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 we understand there's interesting results coming uh, through from uh, the parliamentary as well. Mm. But overnight, this is what the electoral officials have been doing. Right. And like I just said, the NDC have garnered 31,524 uh, winning that Go over that figure again for me so uh, that I can, um, Eliasu. Eliasu, if you just give me a moment, we know it's very interesting because of the parliamentary candidates being Haji Ali Mahama, but you tell us that those hair results are still being collated. Uh, as you can see here, President Ekufado picked up the Nalirigu Gambaga seat in 2016. Eliasu is going to give us the results for 2020 so that we can properly um, understand how much the president is um, gaining, um, pardon me about that. I'll quickly just bring you here. Okay, I think I have my tool here. Eliasu, so give me that. The NDC got 31,524. The NDC, 31,524. Uh, the MPP having 28,123. Two Interesting. Interesting there. Yes. Um, so and the parliamentary there, polls are not in yet. Eliasu. Hello, Daniel. Thank you. The parliamentary polls are not in yet. I just want that confirmation. Yes, exactly. Okay, and we'll come I can to you tell later. you that the supporters of the NDC are already impatient. A while ago, uh, scores of them troop here with motorbikes uh, in anticipation that the Electoral Commission 
uh, should declare the result. They are claiming that the MPP, uh, if you look at the NDC, if you look at the result that have just come in, the supporters of the NDC in the Nalergo Gambaga constituency are anxious. And they are saying that uh, the NDC has won that particular constituency. And so they are expecting that the Electoral Commission would declare the parliamentary uh, 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 results in favor of the NDC. Right, Elias Utanku, thank you very much for joining us with those updates. Just to catch you up here, this is the latest we have from Nalewigu Gambaga in the northeast region. 31,524 votes for the NDC compared to the 2016 tally of 23,130. They shot up by some 8,000 votes. The NPP had 28,123, also an increase, but only of about 2,000 votes. And so, um, as you would, as they, they, that's where you would have it there. It's now a, a difference of about 3,000 votes as compared to a difference of four, uh, for about 3,000 again when uh, the MPP won back in 2016. You want to stay with us because very soon we'll be telling you if this translates into the parliamentary votes where the candidate is um, the Minister for Local Government, that is Haja Ali Mahama. We want to know if she retained her seat or if um, she has been booted out. I would quickly bring you um, a bit of a trend analysis here to understand uh, pardon me there. I think um, perhaps we can go to the parliamentary here to see if this would work. Yep, there we have it. The magic wall never fails us. The smart wall, pardon me, never fails us. Now, um, if you look here at the 2016 through to the... Oh, pardon me, I picked another constituency there. How did this happen? Nalirigu Gambaga, there we have it. The MPP picked it for the first time since 2004 in 2016. The NDC had held it from 2008 and 2012. The, 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 even in 2004, when the NPP picked it up, still President Mahama won that presidential vote. Uh, pardon me, then uh, presidential candidate John Mills won the um, presidential tally and the NPP picked up that seat there. And so it looks like the NDC has had more of an advantage over there, but the tsunami of 2016 was too much for the NPP, for the NDC to hold in 2016. We want to know if this kind of trend will show in other constituencies across the country where you find that the NPP won in 2016, won convincingly, the NDC was knocked off. And in 2020, like we see here, the NDC regains that. Of course, if you're looking at the NDC's news conference, um, the 20, they've picked up 36 uh, seats from the NPP. They call it a flip. Let's quickly head to the Unlock constituency where Richard Sefe had been, has been declared the winner. Set Koshi Yamabu at 5,802. And Mr. Richard Kwame Sepe at 38,722. I therefore declared Mr. Richard, Richard Kwame Sepe elect as a member of parliament for Amokwe. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Live on Election Digest here on your election headquarters um, on Joy News Channel, Joy Prime TV, and of course on Joy 99.7 FM. You just heard the announcements there from the Unlock constituency. Let's quickly head over to Bulsa South, another interesting constituency. Clement Apak, um, there, a very popular name in the Education Policy Committee for the NDC, has been declared victor. Watch this. A very hard and grueling battle, a very, long, a very long night, quite clearly my voice uh, is not the best of ships, but uh, let's uh, give thanks to the Almighty God first, let's uh, give thanks to the rank and file of the NBC in uh, Bursa South. Uh, let's give thanks to my campaign team, led by my good campaign manager, Chairman Caesar Kinkam, supported by his vice Ayorek, by Emmanuel Akampaji, by my former chairman Angavi, and everyone 
who has put in time, resources, and energy to ensure this match deserve victory. If I say this contest was easy, then I'll be dishonest. And I'm not known to be one who is dishonest. It was extremely challenging. But by the grace of God, by dint of hard work, commitment and dedication, and the will of the people, I have been retained as a member of parliament. I give gratitude to the people of Wuzasa for believing in me, understanding that I got elected to represent them at a time when my party lost power. But even within that constraint, I did my best to meet their expectations. In spite of overt and deliberate efforts to try and make me unpopular, but the people knew the truth. And today, the truth has stood. I can only reassure all the people of Buddha South that I will continue to be an MP for everyone. I will do my best to address their challenges and those issues which have bothered us. Our roads not being fixed, our schools still lacking furniture, a lot of them in very dilapidated stages. The electricity not reaching our communities. Many of our communities not having access to portable drinking water. The lack of employment opportunities for the youth. The lack of loan facilities, legitimate loan facilities. Not loan facilities that are used to bait women for our mothers and sisters. I'll do my best to address them. But I'm very confident that I have prevailed and John Mama will prevail. And together, we will transform Bootsa South for the betterment of all the sons and daughters of Bootsa South and Managana. To my competitors, well, it is a competition. They gave it their best. We are not enemies. Uh, let's put what has happened behind us. Let's put our, wheel, our shoulders to the wheel and do our best. You don't need to be a member of parliament to work in support of your people. And I want to believe that once they also came and gave themselves up with the hope and anticipation that they'll be given the chance to lead, just because they have lost, doesn't mean they should go into hibernation. Let them be happy and do it. On this note, I dedicate this victory to all our competitors who have lost their lives in the last four years. And that's Clement Apak, um, new victor for the Bursa South constituency. We'll go to the Upper Dentura uh, constituency very, very uh, shortly. We understand collation has halted, but I just quickly want to update you if you want a general picture of what's happening. Um, for presidential results, we now have 107 out of 275 constituencies. Earlier, I said President Mahama was in the lead after 93 constituencies. That has changed. President Ekufado is now 2,040,831 uh, 2, votes, representing 50.51%. Uh, former President Mahama, 1,934,299, representing 47 47.87%. Let's quickly, we'll come and understand these in a few minutes, but let's go to Upper Dentra, where coalition has halted. Asante Foko is our man on the ground. Asante, what has happened there? Hello, Daniel. Great. Um, tell us why coalition halted. Yes, this is the second time pulling um, coalition has stalled because earlier in the night uh, there was issue as to um, the matter of a pink sheet, which EC saw that it was a forged pink sheet from the NPP, and all because there were six polling stations that the NPP said their pink sheet did not tally that of the NDC. So the EC came in and managed to try as much as possible to reconcile the upping seat with that of NDC and NPP. It was resolved by the EC that, yes, the upping seat tallied with that of the NDC and that the MPP spin sheet was a different one because it had different figures, it had different signatures and other things. 
But MPP insisted that they would never agree their pink sheet should be the one that should be used in the coalition. That didn't work out. It brought some skirmishes, which resulted into a gun sort. Unfortunately, no one got injured. Then it was resolved in a meeting with the EC, the NPP, NDC, and the divisional crime officer. At this meeting, decisions were taken that they should all set aside the six polling station. They should continue with coalition, after which, if the results have no significant influence on the results which have been collated, then they could go ahead and declare the results. If okay. the, um, the six the polling stations, six polling stations set aside, has significant influence on the result, then they would never declare the result, but announce the result. So, coalition started again. Then, after three hours, the NDC primaries, um, their results also came out after collating the primaries result of the, both the MPP and the NDC. The NDC started jubilating because um, per their figures, they had won. Then the MPP came that, no, they never agreed that they should declare the result. Meanwhile, EC had not declared the result. So then came another skirmish, and there were a few issues here and there. That then the regional, um, the divisional commander came in that, yes, as quickly as possible, they should try to solve the issue. So he starts everyone from the coalition center, and he, he stopped every processes, and he asked the NDC, NPP, the EC, to have a meeting with him. So as I'm talking to you now, almost two hours, they are locked up at the meeting. So coalition has at the upper denture west constituency. Okay, so um, Foko, what you're telling us is that initially some pink sheets which were alleged to be fake pink sheets were presented for six polling stations. Um, a bipartisan solution was found to this. And then later, when the NDC seemed to be in the lead, the NPP disputed which paused coalition again. Exactly so, but during the coalition, during the um, coalition, NDC all, M MPP raised some issues, additional issues, indicating that they were they will never accept some of the results, and that the EC should take out to set aside those results, so they could continue with the others. Then the NDC said no, that is not what they both agreed on, so they should continue with the initial plan, and that resulted into the second skirmish. Do we know what those issues were? That's the NPP raised. The MPP said there were some figures, the um, figure never tallied with the one, the words never tallied with the, um, the other one, because the written one never tallied with the words. Because there were some that if it's 4,500, because it is a duplicate, the 4,500, maybe if the deal wouldn't come, they said no, they wouldn't agree. There were some that they are the figures, yes, maybe MPP 500, NDC 200, rejected ballot 4. But the total wasn't written. And the says since the total was not there, they wouldn't agree. So these were some of the issues that the NPP raised. Okay, so this was, these were issues with entry of the data onto the pink sheets? Exactly. Okay, okay. Um, when those issues were raised, what was the EC's response? The EC said they had agreed on an initial plan which they all adhered to follow. So if they have any issue, they should, it should be allowed to declare the result, after which they can go to court to challenge. But MPP said no, they would never allow the results to be declared because if the results are declared, it would be difficult to change everything again. So they wouldn't allow that, and that resulted into um, those skirmishes. Okay. Um, so, Foko, we will definitely come back to you because, as you tell us, there is a, um, a closed-door meeting going on in the Upper Dintra constituency in the, yes, the Upper Dentra West. Upper Dentra West. Thank you exactly. very much. So yes. keep an eye on that, and we will come to you for when, of course, we have some more updates on that. I want to quickly bring you um, the parliamentary results from that constituency for 2016 and get an idea who is fighting for a comeback in that part of the country. Upper Dentra West is in the central region. It's right here. You can call it the horn of the central region. This is the parliamentary result. Um, the NPP 
pick that seat in 2016 with quite a comfortable margin, if you ask me, 16,881 to 10,665. Let's look at the trends and understand exactly how it works. Well, it's gone. It's, it's a blue streak. Uh, uh, as, as how I, I like to describe it. It's a blue streak since 2004 when this constituency was created. As you look there, even the 62.3% that was secured last four years was quite low because in 2007, there was 67.7%. That was the first time that this constituency was created. So it is uh, interesting to see this coming. And remember, Foucault, Asante Foucault told us that the end DC was in the lead. And that is when we had some challenges uh, from the NPP. The NPP raised concern because the NDC was in the lead. And if the NDC's lead um, is maintained by the authorities, this will be the first time in this constituency's history that the NDC has been able to pick up the seats. This is an important coup for the NDC to pick for the NDC to pick in um, the central region. And remember once again that the central region is a key swing region that the NPP needs to win if they want to retain power or the NDC needs to win if they want to come to Jubilee House um, come January 7. Let's take you to another um, interesting part of the country. They say Hurioso constituency. We're told there's tension mounting due to the NDC's refusal to sign the pink sheets. And look, we can't script this in a... We, we can't make this up. Initially, it was the MPP uh, raising concern at Upper Dinshaw West. Now, it's the NDC raising concern at Sehuyoso. Nana Tajiman is our man there on the ground. Nana, tell us, why is the NDC refusing to sign the pink sheets? Uh, well, uh, the counting of the presidential election is over here at Sehuyoso. Uh, constituency which represent the capital of the western north region. Uh, the EC was able to finish by at least as at 10 a.m. The EC was okay with the presidential results and he asked the various polling agent, party agents to come forward and sign so that they he can go ahead and then declare. But the NDC uh, refused to sign. They refused to accept the results of the presidential election. Uh, according to them, they have one or two challenges on the uh, presidential election, and they are not telling what the figures they have. So they want the EC to give them some opportunity to go through their documents once again before they can append their signature on the paper. And this is what brought some kind of misunderstanding, because according to the EC, he and the, the IT, the IT experts of four political parties at half time from dawn at 1 a.m. till now to tell you the results, and each of each and everyone was okay with it until uh, some party functionaries of the NDC came in and they saw, they realized that no, they were not okay with the results, so they have to recount everything again. They used to give them uh, some about 15 minutes to go through, and then uh, later he will go ahead and then announce the results, of which the NDC think the 15 minutes wasn't enough for them. According to them, even when the 15 minutes was given, the EC, uh, the returning officer came back to announce the results, of which they have declared their stand not to accept the presidential result, even though it has been declared yet. Okay. Um, Nana, help me understand. You said this happened at the coalition center. Yes, coalition center, yes. When the NDC came and raised concern. Your was thought? it a recollation of results or it was a recount of the ballot papers? That's very important. Well, a recollation of a results because the ballot paper had already been counted at the police station and had been brought to the coalition center. So recollation of a results. Who was in the lead, NDC or NPP, when it comes to presidential? The NDC, the NPP was in the lead, a presidential candidate for the NPP, Nana Dodanko Ekufuado, was in the lead with a figure of about 32,000... 233. Give me a moment. Give me that figure again. I want to write this down very quickly. You said that at the time... No, no. Just hold on for me, uh, All right. Nana. Um, I just want to engage our smart world quickly. At the time the dispute was raised, the NPP had 32,000. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. 32,000 and what? 232. 232. Two, three, two. Two. 
Okay. And what did the um, what did the MPP have? The NDC have um, thirty thousand three hundred and fifty three. Thirty thousand. Yes. Thirty thousand three hundred and fifty three. Five three. Yes, please. That's NPP. N D C. That's N D C. Yeah. The last one okay. is for the N D C. Did we get parliamentary results? Not yet. We are here to tell you the parliamentary results, of which the NDC is saying they are not okay with the presidential, so they are not ready to cooperate for the theory of the parliamentary results. But I, a person who was here in a short while, I have with me the election director, the regional election director for the NDC, who okay. uh, spoke to the media. If you wouldn't mind, we can speak to him within a jeffy to hear from him what right. actually their concerns are. Right. All right. Uh, Mr. Payos Nguan, the former DC for Contemplative Commission, he is the uh, regional, uh, regional director, uh, election director for the NDC. And I have with you, Mr. Nguan, can you tell me what precisely the NDC your concerns are that you are refusing to accept the presidential result for the NDC also going to it? Yes, uh, thank you. And then I will say good afternoon. Um, you were at the police center. And you saw all what was uh, going on, which uh, the NDC rise up against it. Um, all what we are saying, we are saying is that we are not accepting the results because we have the time we, we, we've been able to identify that the EC has connived with the MPP in the survey. Uh, this is a very large allegation. Conniving yes, yes. is a very large allegation. With them. I said what it, are your basis I said for this? it before them because, you see, when we were saying we are not accepting the result, it is, it, 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 it is an issue between the NDC and the EC. But the MPP were also protesting that the EC should go on to declare the elections. And you saw it, you were a journalist. When they were declaring the elections, the parliamentary candidate for MPP who had doubles to the MP, the sitting MP for this constituency, was also with the press. The DC for this constituency was also with the press. So what interest does they have when we, the NDC, are saying that we have detected some, 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 some sort of fraudulence in the, 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 the results, and therefore we are not accepting it. The EC, as a matter of agency, wanted to address it because we all have the, 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 the pieces with us. And he happens to have the original copies of the pieces. So when we have detected anything of that sort, it is only the EZ who could bring, you know, the, 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 the original copies to come and certify our claims. But the MPP were, was, in a way, preventing the EZ for not, for, for not accepting our uh, appeal. And therefore, if I say that they have tonight with them, I have every point to say that. And my brother, I am, I, I, I am through your media announcing it to the whole world. The presidential election for the Yosu constituency, the NDC is not going to accept it until the EC has accepted our plea and we sit down to collate the 168 pieces again before we append our signature to it. All right, so even you heard from the director of elections for the NDC, Pius, Honorable Pius, he just spoke to me about uh, their decision not to accept the results, the presidential results for the session of Supreme Court. Being us um, with those very important updates, let me quickly take Hello. you to our smart hey. wall. And I've been doing some computations whilst we were listening to Nana. Um, of course, we wrapped attention. If you look at the trends here, the NPP has never won in Sehiri also before in presidential. The first time the NPP won in parliamentary was the last election. And I can tell you why. That promise to create the Western North region really resounded with the residents of Sehiriyoso constituency, especially with the promise that they would be made the regional capital. If you want a place to represent the effect of creation of new regions, it's Sehiriyoso you must go. And here you find, for the first time, President Ekufado was in the lead. Now, I'm saying was in the lead because the NDC is disputing this election. So we do not know if this is the final results that will come. But we can look at this as an indication of what was happening in the Sehiriyoso constituency. Of course, we cannot take this to the bank because definitely um, they, it is being disputed. I want to quickly 
tell you what happened. Now, if you look here, this is uh, Dr. Kwekwe Friye, former health minister, former Western Region minister in this administration. He got 31,736. Um, Evans P. Edu got um, 26,105. Kwekwe Friye appreciated by about 1,000 votes to 32,000. And Evans P. Edu, even though, now Paul Evans Edu, I must tell you, was a former Western Region minister. He was Western Region minister and he was beaten by Dr. Kwekwe Friye. And um, he appreciated his vote tally, but it was not enough to catch up to Dr. Kwekwe Friye. Let's go to one of the most keenly watched seats in the country, the Ayawaso West Wogon seat. A lot of rumors have been flying about social media, but we now have the certified results. Lydia Sarah Malhassan has won the Ayawaso West Wogon seat. Let's go there now. At the coalition center here at the University of Ghana Business School. This is a coalition center for the Ayawaso West Wagon constituency. Well, uh, ecstatic scenes here with supporters of uh, the NPP's parliamentary candidate, who's also the incumbent member of parliament, um, Lydia Siram Al Hassan. Well, uh, a lot of them have come here in their numbers, and what they say is that they have won the polls. They say their own coalition from their own strong room indicates that the polls have gone in favor of uh, their candidate, Lydia Sir Malhassan. I'll just get a bit closer to a few of them and speak to them. Uh, my boss, uh, you are here, you're, you're jubilating and all that. We know the EC is inside there, uh, you know, uh, uh, collating the results. Why are you jubilating? We are jubilating that because we do the hard work because of COVID. Because the day that you are registering the, uh, the, the registration, you see that a lot of the students are not around, so they all go home. So now you do the massive job at the registration center doing the registration. So today, when you go to the pool, you, you know that you've done a uh, good job. So you do our calculation and then other things together. So today, I, I, know, I know that uh, Lydia will win, but tell John that he will never ever come to Ayawasu again to contest any candidate that MPP will provide. You, you, you say you know that I, um, Lydia will win, but, but the coalition is not done. But you have already done it. You have the, done yours. You have already done it at the police centre. Okay. You understand? Because you have a lot of people that are the various places are the agent. Yes, so now I believe my, the hard work that I've done in my centre, they done it. They do the same thing. Great. So, so you, you, you think that uh, the hard work that you have put in is paid off, even though the EC has not uh, declared the result? Yes. Great. So yes. that's what uh, you're having um, him tell me, that uh, uh, he believes that he, they've put in a lot of hard work. But um, he says that they've put in hard work, and that is why you're jubilating. But is it not too early for you to be jubilating at this time? No, no, no. It's not too early. Um, we, 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 we are in power, but we... we, we we did our best. We've, we've worked so hard for this seat. And, you know, this seat belongs to uh, MPP. And we are not ready today. We are not ready tomorrow. And we won't be re ever be ready to give out this seat. John belongs to the movie industry. He should go back. This is a mature seat. We don't need somebody who, who, who is a joker. We need some, a serious... Well, 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 no, no. You, 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 you got to hold on there. Now, the decider of who gets to represent the people in parliament is the people themselves. And they have to vote. And they have gone to the polls. Well, the EC is still tabulating and collating the numbers. Well, you, you, you don't know what, what, what the outcome is going to be. And you're here, uh, you know, making a claims that you're going to keep the seat. How? Oh, we have already won. I mean, we have our own coalition center. Where what does your data say? Well, I will not give you any any number or any delegate so that it will be a, 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 to bring controversy. But I know Lydia has won, and she has won hands down. And just just coming here now is the incumbent member of parliament, Lydia Sarah Malhassan, and and so these are scenes, uh, live scenes from uh, the Ayawasu West Wogon uh, constituency. Um, Malhassan just getting here quickly. Um, uh, so we'll just try and get some, some quick words from her. Just quickly try and get uh, some
party for the MPP. This is a traditional MPP stronghold. We have won this seat for the sixth. So for me, it's normal. For me, it's normal. Well, your, 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 your team members are saying that you've won. I mean, have they showed you the data? Have they showed that to you? I was doing that with them. We did it together, and it looks very positive. We're waiting for five polling stations. We have won. Look, waiting for five polling stations. Two of those polling stations, NDC won, and we won three of the polling stations. If you put it together, we are heading for a very good margin. What you say? He has been with me through difficult times. I pray he hears my prayers. I want to thank my team. I want to thank the executives. I thank the patrons, the leaders, the coordinators, the police station executives. I thank my constituents who voted for me. For those who didn't vote for me, I know they will do it the next time around. For my critics, I am grateful for your constructive criticism, which made it possible for us to win the seat. My and one people to thank for making this possible. I thank all those who supported me, His Excellency, the President of our land, the First Lady, the Chief of Staff, all those who made it possible contributed for us to come this far. Earlier in the for me, the work that we have done is there for all to see. My constituent came out to reward the hard work. They came out to vote for His Excellency Nana Dodan and also voted for me. This first time we have done so much and I keep saying that we have built a hospital within two years. I came, I was voted or I was sworn in February last year. I'm not even two years yet. So what else do you expect from the constituents who have this level of leadership for someone who has been MP for less than two years? Come into my constituency and see the developmental projects all over. We have built renovated schools. Those campus have seen a lot of developmental projects from me. The students are not here. He would have been beaten heavily. But Lagos, And that is Lydia Sirwam Al Hassan. You're live on your election headquarters. Um, as you can see, we are live from the situation room where all the results are coming through. That's the screen to my left below us is Studio 997. Bernice Abu Beidulansa is standing by with our expert panelists. We'll cross over to them shortly. But we have Manuel Cranting on the line because what we just heard was Lydia Sarah Mahasan speaking a bit earlier. Manuel now has the certified results from the Electoral Commission, which confirmed that Lydia Sarah Mahasan has indeed um, retained her seat and she is the re elected Member of Parliament for Ayawasu West Wogon. Manuel, uh, take us through that confirmation. Well, so, Daniel, um, the certified results from the Iowa Store West Wogan constituency um, under the hands of Derek Ejekum, who is the returning officer for the constituency, um, put, and maybe I'll just start off from the parliamentary uh, election itself, uh, Lydia Sterman Hassan, who was the incumbent and has been retained and declared uh, MP-elect, um, out of a total um, of... 78,199 right. uh, votes cast 
Lydia Feuermann Hassan had 39,851. John Seto Dumelo, who closely um, was following uh, Lydia Feuermann Hassan, came through with 37,478 votes. Uh, Gifty Buchi, who uh, ran on the ticket of the uh, People's National Convention, PNC, uh, came through with 160 votes. And then Richard Mauli Amegache, who was an independent candidate in this election, uh, was able to garner 108 votes. In all, uh, 595 votes um, were declared uh, invalid, or like rejected ballot. Right. And so that essentially put uh, Lydia Siram al Hassan um, ahead of all of them with 39,851 uh, votes, uh, making her uh, the MP elect, as was declared by the uh, uh, returning officer. Just this morning, well after what, 12 hours of uh, coalition um, up from last night up until somewhere around 8 a.m. Uh, this morning. And when you go into the presidential polls itself, it's interesting, Daniel, that you take note of these numbers. That, um, yes, the NPP won again. President Kufuado won in this um, election. But uh, the John Mahama did quite better than John Dumelo. And these are the numbers. Uh, President Kufuado um, had 39,962. Mm -hmm. 39,962. Just just help me a little, okay? Mm. Um, So that our our viewers and our listeners can properly understand this. You say President Kufuado has 39,962. That's yes. Yes, okay. and and and, and um, it's instructive to note that um, the presidential election had mm -hmm. a bit of a higher turnout than the parliamentary. So the parliamentary in total had seventy-eight thousand one hundred and ninety-nine okay. uh, ballots cast, but presidential had eighty-one thousand seven hundred and seventy-three uh, okay. total ballots cast, and it's out of that number that President Kufuado had thirty-nine thousand. 962. Uh, John Mahama followed closely with um, just less than 300 votes, and he had 39,709. Mm-hmm. 39,709. Take note that John Dumelo, uh, in the same uh, constituency representing the NDC, had 37,478. 37,478, while John Mahama did, you know, uh, slightly better, you know, well in uh, over 2,000 votes more uh, than John Dumelo. He had 39,709. Um, Christian uh, Kwabna Andus, uh, who is popularly referred to as Sofo Chiabusum, who um, is a flag bearer of the uh, Ghana Union Movement, the Goom Party, was in a distant third position with right. 322 votes. Right. Three, 322 votes. Um, Ivor Komna Green Street, who, you know, um, interestingly, had run for, um, you know, parliamentary... Member of parliament. Uh, mm. He had actually run for the parliamentary seat in 2004 and, uh, on the ticket of the CPP. This time round, uh, running as the presidential candidate on the ticket of the same party, was able to garner um, 137 votes. 137 right. votes. Um, Ikiadonko had 41 votes. Mm-hmm. And Henry Herbert Lati of the GCP, they had 11 votes. Right. Hassan Ayariga of the APC, 14 votes. Uh, Kofi Tesevar Apalu of the LPG, 18 votes. David right. Apacera uh, had 19 votes. Bridget mm. Jogonoku of the PPP had 91 votes. Um, Nana Konedo Ajiman Rowling had 26 votes. And the independent candidate, Alfred Kwame Sidu Walker, came through with 20 
eight uh, votes. And so these are the certified results right. from the uh, Electoral Commission. But Daniel, I'll just quickly pass through and say that these results are being challenged by the NDC in the constituency. Well, I've spoken to the uh, constituency chairman of the NDC, uh, who tells me that in fact, he's alleging uh, what right. he calls um, deliberate sidelining by the uh, Electoral Commission. And he says that this sidelining was done with impunity. He, he says that uh, they were not uh, involved in the process. So all of the uh, parties that were represented at the coalition center had their own uh, carbon copies of the pink sheets, which were certified from the various polling stations. And so an anomalous circumstance, the practice has been that when these uh, pink sheets are brought to the coalition center um, and the EC does its, uh, you know, coalition, it just, you know, tries to reconcile with the various polling and uh, various political parties and their polling agents just to make sure that the numbers that, uh, you know, it has collated just tally with the numbers of, on the, uh, you know, carbon copy of the polling uh, of, the, of the political parties. But the NDC claims that they were not uh, involved in this process at all. What they say is that they were uh, able to identify some uh, disparities in the numbers and, if you like, uh, repetitions in the numbers of the polling uh, stations which were recorded at the coalition center. And so they re uh, requested that the EC um, indulges them to reconcile. Right. Uh, they alleged this wasn't done. But I've spoken to the presiding officer, I mean a returning officer for the constituency, Derek Ajikum, who tells me emphatically that this was not officially brought to the attention of himself or any of the other EC officials in the uh, coalition center uh, for that matter. Mm. They say they have engaged all the political parties. In fact, the certified results that I read from for you has the signature of all the uh, political parties and their reps. And so this uh, was done. And so all of them, uh, in fact, the NDC, Including the NDC, represented by Daniel Na, right. in the uh, presidential election, has, you know, signed. And then uh, he also signed for John Dumelo on the, uh, 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 you know, a resolve summary sheet. And, right. and so that, that just buttresses the point of the EC that they had engaged them. But as it stands, the NDC says it's consulting with its legal team to be able to come up with a strategy okay. on how to proceed right. from this point. Mano, uh, pardon me, give me Lydia Sarah Malhassan's um, vote tally again. Just hers, just Lydia Sarah Malhassan. It was 39,000. Yes, um, Lydia Sarah Malhassan has 39,851 mm -hmm. votes. 851 votes. Yes, please. Thank you very much, uh, Manuel Cranting. So you look at the presidential and the parliamentary results for Ayawasu West Wogon, and I know that this is fodder for the analysts because um, John Dumelo was quite loud on social media especially, but you see his presidential candidates polling nearly 2,000 votes more than he did. Um, you see Lydia Sarah Malhassan also a bit shy of her presidential candidates, Nana Dodankwe Kufuado, but by just about 100 votes, 962, 851 here. This is something that the analysts, of course, would chew. And I see uh, Studio 997 is almost is ready with Benis Abu Beidou Lansa and our guests there. We'll go into those details. But before that, Mahama Ayariga has retained the Boku Central seat for the NDC again. Listen. I want to thank the good people of Boko, all those who voted, both those who voted for NDC and those who voted for NPP, and all the candidates for voting peacefully and allowing the process to take place peacefully till this very successful end. I think that it is all of us, the people of Boko, who have won today. And we should all be proud of ourselves that we have been able to achieve this peaceful and successful elections. And I want to assure you nice that together with all of you, we'll continue to work together to preserve the peace of Boko. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. We can, we can develop as one people. So we post here now.
You're live on Joy New on the Joy News channel. This is your election headquarters, and we are live, of course, on Joy News on Joy 99.7 FM and on Joy Prime TV. Very soon, we'll cross over to Studio 997. But this is the lay of the land as we have it so far. As you can see, our smart wall is filling up with a number of seats in there. Um, I'll quickly take you to the Western North region. And um, if you look here, Bibiani Amihasu Bekwai um, has remained NPP. If, if you know what happens in the, in the northern part of the Western region, you realize that um, this is not too much of a surprise. The NPP has enjoyed um, support in that part of the region. Sehwi Akontombra, is, however, very interesting for President Ekufuado, 50.9% to John Dramani Mahamas, 45.6%. If you look at the trend analysis, the data there, this is not a seat that the NDC has, the MPP has ever won as far as presidential tally is concerned. In fact, if you look at the Sehwi Akontombra seat in 2016, where the MPP won the um, parliamentary, um, a lot of people argue that there was actually um, a break in the ranks of the NDC, and that is how come the MPP was able to slip through. And so you, you can see that John Mahama won convincingly in f by 54.4% in 2016, but now he has dropped to 45.6%, and um, President Ekofado appreciating to 16,921 votes with 50.9%. If there's anything we have learned about this election, it is that there is no formula really. It's very difficult to look at how the trends are showing. It's very difficult to look at how the formulas are showing because I can show you, say we are Contumbra, then I can take you to Upper Dintra West in the central region where the NPP has held for years and the NDC is currently in the lead. Of course, the MPP is challenging that coalition process. The Jabusu constituency, the constituency of Kabna Betan Kando, the ranking member on the Health Committee of Parliament, um, has retained the NDC. Um, it has here John Mahama winning their 56%. John Mahama, 56%. President Ekufado, 39%. 0.5%. Remember earlier, we went to the Sehiri also constituency right here, where this is empty, and I'll tell you why it's empty. It's empty because this result is being challenged by the NDC, and because it's being challenged, um, the EC is unable to declare it. And we were told by Nana Tajiman, our correspondent there, that the NPP was in the lead as at the time um, that we were getting those results. So if you just joined us, here's the lay of the land. We've gotten a number of results populating our magic wall currently. Um, as you can see there, some of the regions showing the character that they normally show. The OT region is a region that the NPP would have hoped to capitalize on the promise of creating a new region. Um, unfortunately, they have not been able to take advantage of that. I'll take you to... Um, the, is it the Crachy West or the Crachy East constituency where Michael Jato is member of parliament? Pardon me. It's actually Crachy East constituency where Michael Jato was member of parliament. As you can see there in the parliamentary poll, he won in 2016, but President Mahama won. I'll take you quickly to what is happening there in the parliamentary poll this year. Uh, pardon me, in 2020 is what I want. So we can see what happened. Michael Yaujato has fallen 49.3% uh, there in the poll, 50.7% to Wisdom Gidisu, um, and 83% uh, voter turnout, 40,201 valid votes cast. So that is another seat that, uh, if, you, if you're going to use the expression for the day, the NDC has flipped. And we will look at the overall picture a bit more as we go forward and get an idea of whether or not the flip means the NDC really um, gets into Jubilee House and gets the majority in Parliament, or as the NPP will have them say, it's rather a flop in disguise. My name is Daniel um, Daze. We uh, will move to Studio 997 immediately where Bernice Abubedulanta is standing by with our expert panelists 
ready to serve you with all the analysis that you need.